Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul. I am a nerd, and you are here for the July 2015 Practice Master Virtual User Group Meeting. <sighs> Try saying that all in one breath. We're sorry we're a few minutes late. We were just having so much fun talking about Practice Master. We got lost track of time. Today, we are talking about the people file. Mary Jo is going to talk about that, and I am talking about document assembly. Very briefly, because as we all know, document assembly is kind of one of those things that uh, I could, I could go on talking for hours and hours about. But before we talk about that stuff, I want to point out what this is. This is your GoToWebinar control panel. If you are still looking at it, it is because you have not pressed this button right here. This button that looks like an arrow pointing to the right will cause this whole thing to fly right off the right-hand side of your screen, leaving only these buttons showing, and this one will have then turned into an arrow pointing to the left, meaning that if you press it again, this comes back onto your screen. Why would you want it to come back onto your screen? Well, first off, why do you want to get rid of it? Obviously, because this might be covering up what I'm going to be showing you and what Mary Jo is going to be showing you, and you want to be able to see that. Why would you want it back? Well, you can type a question here. You can hit the send button, and Leanne, our humble and prompt, prompt for today moderator, uh, will recognize that you have a question. She will interrupt Mary Jo and I just at the right time, and she'll ask her question for you. Now, uh, if I get off track, or if you didn't quite ask the question the way you intended to, and Mary Jo's, you know, answering the question you asked, but that's not what you meant, uh, or if you have follow-up questions, just type them here. Keep remembering it, and Leanne will keep interrupting us at just the right time to keep us on the right track. Uh, also, if you're not feeling shy today, you can hit this button. Every once in a while, somebody does. It's an exciting moment for us here when somebody does, because this hand with the arrow pointing upward in front of it means raise your hand. And if you raise your hand, Leanne will do the same thing. She'll recognize you have a question. She'll interrupt Mary Jo or myself at just the right time. But then what she'll do is she'll unmute your microphone, and you can ask your own question. Now, that channel of communication, that unmuted microphone will remain open for the entire uh, answering of your question. So you keep us on track. You ask those follow-up questions. You make sure that we've got, we are answering the question you intended us to answer, and uh, we will get it answered. So without further ado, I will press the magic buttons, plus a few other buttons apparently, and get us back into practice, Master, so that Mary Jo can tell you all about the people file. Mary Jo? Okay. So a lot of times we want to add contacts to uh, our screen and relate them to a matter, but it's sometimes difficult to do so. If we look at – I'm just going to pick Michael Larson here. And if we look at our um, address tab, we have a matter contact down here that's linked to this matter. It may or may not be the same person depending on whether this is a company or whatever. On the Setup tab, uh, I don't think we have any on the Setup. Let's go to Details. We would have a um, referred by person. So here's a contact on the case. Um, on the Court tab, we're also going to have a opposing counsel. We're going to have a court and a judge. Those are all contacts that are related to this case. But did you see how I had to go to three different screens to, first of all, add those contacts to the matter? And then to be able to see them, I have to click on that. Now, we do have a, um, a contact page that you can, you can see those on as well. If I were to go back and adjust my screens and add that tab to see the contact tab, then, you know, all those contacts that are on that, I, I get a list. But I can't add anybody to that list. And it makes it very difficult. The other problem that I have with this is, let's say you have more than one opposing attorney. Where am I going to put it? I've only got a line for one. Um, it, it just makes it really hard to add multiple contacts um, without adding a lot of extra fields and taking up a lot of extra space on each of my screens. So we've developed what we call our people tab. And what we've done here is we've added a tab that is linked to the contact file that you can add. You can see the new button works over here. Um, contacts all on one screen, and I can see all of the ways that they're related to this particular matter. Uh, I can choose that. I'll show you that screen in a moment. Um, and a whole bunch of other information on these contacts specific to this matter. 
So I can, it, what that does is opens up a whole world of possibilities because um, we might have Marcus Phillips, who is the claims contact on this matter, but maybe he is a, an expert witness on another matter. Or maybe Kelly White is co-counsel on this matter, but she's my opposing counsel on another. Who knows? I mean, there's all kinds of possibilities that you can have. But having a people file allows me to tie any contact to any matter in any role that I choose to for that specific matter. So it makes it really easy to see everybody, to get everybody in one place, and to work with them. So I'm going to hit my new button uh, on here, and it opens up a screen. This is where we're going to go ahead and pick who the contact is. If this contact isn't in the system, you will be able to add them right then and there. So again, it's always going to be somebody that is in your existing contact database, or we can add one. And I'm just going to type myself. I'm not sure if I'm in here, and I'm not, because you can see my, my drop-down is not filling in. So I am not in the database now. So if I hit my tab, it's going to go out to my contact list, and it doesn't find me in here. This is sample data. I'm not listed in here. So I have the opportunity there to then just go ahead and add myself to this list. So we'll go in, and we'll just put me in. This is just like I was adding a contact, just like I would in any other contact uh, anywhere else. I say, okay, I could fill in all of my information. I'm not going to bother with that right now. But I could fill in all of my address, phone number, email, everything I need to do for that contact and save it. So I've just added that contact to the screen, uh, to my list. Now if I hit my tab key, I'm in the system. And any information that I had regarding me as a contact, if I was tied to an organization, if I had you know, any of that other information, I, I have that available to me now here. We also have a role list. How am I tied to this matter? We generally start with a generic um, role list that we've come up with for multiple firms across the board, and then you can modify this. You may not ever do any kind of real estate work or insurance work or things like that, and you could take out those roles that don't apply to your practice. You may add roles in here. Maybe you, you do bankruptcy and you need specific roles that have to do with bankruptcy. Maybe you don't like that this says other attorney. You want it to say something else. Maybe you don't like opposing counsel. You want it to say opposing attorney. You, this is modifiable, but we lock it down so that users can't change it. They have to pick something off of this list. And that's very important for what Paul's going to talk about next, because if I have somebody typing in opposing counsel and somebody typing in opposing attorney, and I'm trying to do some kind of document assembly or things like that, that's going to mess me up because I might say I need to have everybody with the role of opposing counsel and somebody put it in different or somebody spelled it wrong or they abbreviated it, things like that. So it's important to lock the list down and it's always able to be added to and changed. So if somebody comes up to you and says, oh, you know, we don't have this or that, you say, oh, well, we can add that or we don't really need that. You can use this instead. So you always give it some kind of a, of, a, um, of a role. So the contact always has some way that they're tied to this particular matter. You then can say whether or not this is yours, um, or if it's our defendant, you know, is this our defendant that we are representing or is it theirs? If it's theirs, we don't check this box. So if I were putting this in, is this if I were the defendant? Let's get back up here and make this work a little better. So I am the... Oh, defendant, and I would say that I am ours. I, you guys are representing me, so this would be that. I could click that. Um, just another way that we can sort some things out. Um, there's a place for notes and comments. Now, we've got a lot of other things, again, that can relate to um, uh, different things. If we have uh, multiple uh, attorney plaintiff relationships and defendants and we want to know, you know, maybe me as a defendant, I have four other attorneys and I need to know who they are. I can, again, link to the contact list. I can choose those so that those are tied together. We've got an option, a little employment information area here. Um, if I scroll over just a little bit on this side, I've got whether or not I would be included on the certificate of service and what my relationship would be um, and all kinds of other little tweaky things that we've done. Um, but this then, if I save it, will put me on this particular matter as the defendant. I might have three other defendants that I want to put in here, or I may have other roles that I can tie. Now, you see I've got this nice short little list here. Um, this could be longer. It could be bigger. It doesn't matter, but I've got everything I need to know on this one little tab. I don't have to flip through the address tab, the setup tab, the details tab, the court tab to find out who the court is, who the judges are. It's all right here on this screen. 
if I were highlighted on here, there's also some additional adjustments that we can do with snapshots that you could see all that information as well. So I don't even have to click on it. I can make this so I could see everything. I didn't put any information in for me. I don't know if there's some more on some of these. Here we go. Here's one that's great. Here's Darlene Blackstone. Look at all of her information. Pops right up on here. So if I needed her phone number, I don't even have to click. I don't have to do anything further after I've entered her. I can see it right here. So that is our people file makes things much easier. There's a lot of things you can sort through. If you wanted to see it by role, just click and, and sort it. Just a great place to go to add everybody and see it in one place. Makes your life a lot easier. The place to put everything about everyone that has anything to do with this matter. Wow, that's good. You like that? Wow, that's I, really I, good. I that up all by myself. Wow, that could be like a little tagline for the people file. That's exactly all right. All right, Paul, go ahead. Okay, now, as Mary Jo mentioned, it's important that data go into Practice Master the right way in order for us to do the next thing that we're going to talk about, which is document assembly. And uh, these people all are involved in certain documents that we might need to prepare. Now, I'm going to ask you to kind of let your imagination roam free here because there is no way that in the 15 minutes or 10 to 15 minutes that I've been allotted that I can show you everything there is to to do with document assembly. But here's the general premise. We've got all this stuff in here. We know who all the people are. We know information about the courts. We know information about the clients. Usually we're putting other things into Practice Master. If you're doing defense work, you're storing things like claim number and court number and type of accident and you know the police report information and arresting officer or citing officer information all sorts of information specific to the type of law that this particular case falls into so why don't we use that information to assemble all the different documents that that might be related to to this particular type of law so i'm going to take you in there i'm going to get over on one of these screens that has something to do with the case itself i'm going to click the word document assembly button and these are all my documents that I have in my sample system. So I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of go out on a limb here, and I'm going to click on medical records request. And I'm going to hope that I have the right information to, to do this for this particular matter. We'll find out. First thing it does, which medical provider are we doing this request for? There are three of them. We have stored this information. Now, in this sample system, these come from a medical services file, but these could also come from the people file. And a lot of times, your medical providers are people. So I'm going to say that's the one. Uh, Who is the insurance company? We only have one, so I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And bam. Now, I want to point out that this letter has been assembled because I want you to understand that if I hadn't been talking as I was clicking, in under five seconds, and two clicks, I am looking at a letter to request medicals for that policy from that medical provider. Now, I'm not really looking at the letter because this particular letter has been coded to do a couple other things. First, we don't always get the records just because we request them. So this letter has been coded to automatically create a calendar entry for this particular matter, for this particular attorney, uh, most likely the primary attorney on the matter, uh, to confirm the medical records have been received, and it's automatically scheduling that for uh, a certain number of days from what it thinks is today. Uh, my system thinks today is, I believe, 12, 15, 14, so it's scheduling this for a couple days later. I'm going to go ahead and simply cancel out of that because I merely want to show you how that works. I don't need to save that record. And then here it's also set to save a document management record. If you're using Practice Master as a document management system, it will automatically pop up a document management record to go ahead and save that document into your system. It already knows who it was for. It already knows who the primary attorney is. It already knows today's date. Oh, it's, it's, it was scheduling that for 30 days later because it's uh, today's date it thinks is 11, 17, 14. I, again, I'm going to cancel out of this because I don't want to clutter up my sample system. And here I am looking at the letter. Now, before we go back to the letter, I want to point out if I had World Docs, it would do the same thing. Since Practice Master and World Docs link together so tightly, uh, it's either going to prompt me to create a document management record in Practice Master or World Docs. Uh, uh, not to say that you couldn't save it into another document management system, but of course, Practice Master and, and World Docs integrate very tightly together. And so here we are. It's taken the information, some of it that it knew right away 
for instance, that the case was for Michael Larson and the worker's comp number was that. That's the carrier number and the date of injury. It knows who it's sending the letter to because I told it which medical provider. Okay. And then this particular letter has been coded in such a way to simply be ready to print when I'm done. See the signature down here, Michael Jensen? It knows that Michael Jensen is the primary attorney on the matter because that's stored in practice master. Now, I got to tell you, this is a very simple illustration of document assembly. Um, we can do, and you can do, using Practice Master, all sorts of fancy things. We have some clients that are doing fully captioned, complete with cert service uh, pleadings instantly. Uh, in a properly designed Practice Master system with the right documents coded, we can pretty much create a caption and assertive service and the pleading that's in between uh, in a matter of about 10 or 15 seconds. You literally pick a matter, choose which pleading you want, um, and answer with uh, extension, uh, request for extension, whatever it may be, and literally 15 seconds later, you're looking at that document assembled. Uh, another thing to consider is that it all has to do with how the data is in there. So a lot of times the data that you need to be storing in Practice Master is data that's in your documents. So if you're going to be assembling documents, even if that's something that you're planning for months down the road, maybe a year down the road, maybe even two or three years down the road, it still makes sense to look at your documents to understand what bits of data you need to store because that's the ultimate end goal for a lot of firms is to have practice master assembling documents, to have it doing forms, to have it doing wills and trusts and uh, court documents like pleadings, caption pleadings, uh, all these documents contain the information that you're going to want to store in Practice Master. So in a nutshell, that is a very quick and simple demonstration of what document assembly is. If you'd like to see it in more detail, like I say, I could go on talking about this for hours and can get into some really, really intricate stuff, but we only have a certain amount of time here, so we want to kind of limit what we're showing you uh, with a simple letter requesting medicals. Keep in mind, it's all part of that workflow. You notice that when the when the letter assembles, it automatically schedules the follow-up. It automatically puts the document away. It, as things get pushed through the system, document assembly is one of those things that can, can move a case from point A to point B, from opening to closing automatically through your system. Leanne tells me that we have a question. Yes, the question is, how much customization is involved in setting up document assembly capability and how much work will be needed down the road when upgrading to a new version of Practice Master? Okay, I'll take that in two things. Um, document assembly is the uh, biggest amount of customization that you need to do. In other words, uh, you can take Practice Master and load it up and, and not change a single thing and do some neat things. Keep track of notes, uh, keep track of basic information, take emails and journal them, uh, do document management. You can do that with relatively little customization. Pra uh, uh, document assembly is, is the thing that takes the most work as far as customization and is the, the, the biggest job as far as customization. But on the flip side, it is the thing that you can do in Practice Master that provides the biggest payback. Properly automated documents can be uh, incredible time savers and can therefore help you to process a huge additional amount of work with the, the resources and staff that you already have. So it allows you to, to basically make more money uh, in the same amount of time with more cases. So uh, to tell you that, that it doesn't take much customization at all, well, that would probably be a bit of bending the truth. Now, we have certain clients that come to us and say, we want you to customize our practice master and make our documents automated, and we want you to do everything. We have other clients that come to us and say, we want to spend as little money as possible with you doing the work. We want you instead to show us how to do it. Um, and we have some, most of them are kind of in between. They want us to show them how to do some of the customization 
and, and do some of it as a, as a starting point. So we will work with people on whatever level they want. And to be perfectly frank, we have some clients that have simply taken Practice Master without any help from us and done what they need and gotten it to, cust- gotten it to pump out some assembled documents. So uh, I would tell you it's not rocket science, uh, but I would caution you that, that it, it takes two things. It takes a person that understands enough about your practice to know how documents go together and how uh, they need to be customized and how they need to be uh, coded, if you will. And that person has to have enough time to do it. Now, uh, before I go and answer the other question, which Leanne's going to remind me of in a minute, I want to uh, actually just show you this so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to take that same medical records request, but I'm going to open it as a template so you can see. It's not really rocket science. Yes, you have to be nerdy. Yes, you have to understand a little bit about how uh, computers work. You have to have a logical orientation and disposition. But here, for instance, is the variable that pulls in the scene by the doctor's name. Here's the name of the provider. Here's the address one, two, and three. And there's a certain one of these flags. And there's there's buttons to do all this. You don't have to understand what these zeros and ones mean. But one of these flags means, hey, suppress this address two and address three if they're blank. Um, so it's really not that hard to do. Um, now, the second part of the question was, how hard is it to, you know, to go from one version to the next? That part's easy. Uh, STI is extremely, extremely good about not breaking things when they go from one version to another. Occasionally, you might have to make a very small tweak. Perhaps the, the most uh, common time that you have to make a change when you go from one version to another is that now Practice Master offers some new feature that you want to take advantage of, so you have to change, you want to change your data format. Uh, for some reason to take advantage of that feature, and now you'll need to change the document that relied on that old data format to, to adhere to the, the new data format. That's probably the only time you'll ever have a problem going from one document to another, or one version to another. Any more questions on that, Leanne, or follow-up? No, that's it. Awesome. Well, that, in a nutshell, is, is, is a quick intro to uh, Document Assembly and Practice Master. Now, next month, we're going to talk about customizing the main tab, that first group of options that you see when you come into Practice Master. Mary Jo is going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about filtering the calendar. Maybe you just want to show trials. Maybe you just want to show a certain client. There's a way to do that. It's kind of hidden. Not many people know about it. I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, if you hadn't heard these topics and wanted to know what they were, you can always come to our website, which is Attorney Computer Systems. Dot com. Notice the emphasis on the last S. And once you're there, you can go to videos and you'll see all three of our virtual user group meetings listed here. And if you were to click on one, like Practice Master, like I'm about to, you'll notice that it just kind of describes what the virtual user group meeting is. But then the first entry in this page is a description of the next meeting, its time, its date, what its topics are, with two links that you can click. Either one will take you to the registration page. As you scroll down, you'll see the recorded versions of what we have. This is the one we're attending right now. So it's currently in post-production. Heck, it's not even post-production yet. We're still still recording it. And as you scroll down even further, you get to see and scroll through and, and browse through all the previously recorded Practice Master or Tabs or World Docs virtual user group meetings. We also have our Coffee Pot webinars that are recorded once a month by me. Mary Jo has her eBytes video series. She records one on Practice Master, one on Tabs, and one on World Docs each month. And we have the Paul and Mary Joe Show, which is our longer, broader focus uh, uh, video series that goes into great deal detail on a specific topic. And if you can't find what you're looking for just by browsing, you can just type something like, let's say, email and hit enter, and it'll show you items that match that description or have that word in it, like how to manage your email or how to uh, do the work with the email tab, or one of the things has to do with, uh, I'm sure, how to email people uh, their bills. These things are all things that we have recorded videos about that you can find simply by typing email. So that's it. Everybody have a good rest of the day, rest of the month, and we will see you next month when we talk about uh, customizing the main tab and filtering the calendar. Thanks. Bye-bye.